Okay, let's let's slowly slowly start. Uh, okay, so this uh, the document which I want you guys to refer is this this document, which is there in the code. So it's clearly different which API needs to be picked up uh, and stuff like that, line by line details. So you can just follow the complete step by step instruction. So remaining step, let me give execute it and show you guys one you you get the confidence of running it. So, but but make sure you're practicing this stuff. So unless and until you don't do that, that you may not feel that comfort. You visit it. All the things for giving the bash, it, it just remains it. So make sure you do practice this stuff. So, okay. So basically, <clears throat> once I create this stuff to upper, okay, pretty little, uh, uh, Program will be written over here. So basically, what, what it, it, it's extending a UDF class. It's a built-in class. So that how to get those UDF, all those instructions are available in that document. So from this particular uh, uh, get it, okay, and it extends. I am creating a two upper. Okay. Uh, okay. Match up this difference between UDF and generic. Um, I guess uh, uh, I I have never worked on generic. If not really sure what exactly, but I think uh, when my, I was learning it, there was nothing known as generic UDF. But I'm not sure whether there is something something. Okay, UDF. By the way, everyone understand, right? It's nothing but a class being made for user defined. So if I want to create defined function for Hive, I simply go for. UDF, but I, I've never heard of generic UDF. Maybe that's something new for me. I'll, Try to see that if I can get something, but but I'm pretty much sure that uh, UDF. So so let me let me try Google to what exactly is that? Uh, you're giving. Um, okay. So as far as this UDF, what you're going to do is. Uh, it extends to upper, so it's pretty much there is an evaluate uh, method available inside that. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm going to take up basically a cell name actually that I've written. So what I what's, what's going to happen? Two of name is what I'm going to happen. Is that which I heard is directly go and directly go and sit inside this particular. Uh, Right? What exactly is that? Okay, yeah, I, I see some no uh, mic. Okay. Yeah. Um okay, so basically what's gonna happen? That particular data will be picked up by this method. Okay. And that evaluate method, in case if there is no data given, it's gonna directly Return if there is a data assignment. So what is going to go for convert it to string and then a method is been written which is going to convert into a case and then just return that value. So that's very two line logic that's been written. Okay. So let's see how exactly that get executed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Um, hope you guys remember how exactly we have done. Okay, UDF. How we did export and stuff like that. Creating a. Um, module out of it, right? I mean, the jar file out of it. So I, I just click and I just do an export, we created a uh, uh, jar file. I'm just to see which location, exactly the same place, class and project you're going to click on. And then I'm in exactly of the just click on next and I get my UDF of jar created, okay? It's there available in my, let me just have a look. And let me just so that um, inside documents, I guess created exec. Yeah, this exec created udf.jar. Okay, so this is my jar created. Okay, uh, any questions on that? Oh, my voice is ringing again. Oh, I don't know what, what's wrong with the connection. <clears throat> okay, let me try making it slow rather than wasting a lot of time again. 
Uh, okay. So so make sure you you ask now in case if you want to repeat, I, I'll do that rather than disconnecting and connecting again because that that didn't work well. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, so I have everyone is fine with how we created this UDF dot jar file, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, so basically, how exactly I created a jar file? Okay, let me have a quick repeat for that. So this was a Java file written. Copy paste uh, the same from the Word document which you are, which is being given to you guys. And in, in fact, this PDF document. Okay, it's clearly defined. So I mean, that's that's one reason I'm not giving importance for this part because line by line instructions, everything is given over here. Okay, so anywhere you get stuck. You copy paste exactly the same stuff, and then we'll proceed with that. Okay, so once that is done, what's happening now? Once it's done, I copied that. I created a jar file. Right click. Hello. Yeah, I, I can hear my echo as well. So I right click, and then create a UD. Uh, I mean, judf.jar, right? Export, and then I create a jar file out of it. So everyone know, see you, you can create a jar file, right? So in case not, I would highly recommend you to go through the first, second, I mean, maybe third or fourth session. So that's where we are explaining how exactly you can create a jar file. All right, so once that is done, that's available. I, I can hear uh, some sort of a background noise. So let me see if everyone mute or uh, I can see some of you guys are not mute everyone. Okay. Uh, now let's, uh, okay. Once I have my EXC created, so that's, that's sitting in UDF.jar. So if I do a right click, open a terminal, then I do a LS first, let me do a PW. UD working tree and I I see the thought exactly a jar file, right? So everyone did that. Now I'm gonna take up this document. It's actually the same. What's happening with this guy? Okay. So now so this process we have completed. Now the step two table with the student file what we have we don't need to do checking the data. Checking the data has been loaded, not required. Add the jar file to complete path. So this is exactly what we're going to do now. So, so add, add that particular complete path. Right. So this is what you're going to do. So basically, what I'm going to do, adding the jar. So you know that this is the jar which we have, right? I created this guy. Now what I'm going to do is right copy this location entirely. And then where exactly I have my hive and how exactly you're going to add jar. You're going to add it inside your hive environment. So on my hive terminal. Okay. This is where I'm going to add jar, add jar and give the complete uh, right click and paste and then slash UDF dot jar. Okay. Let me remove the chat window. Is everyone fine with this? Adding jar. Okay. So it's it's giving added this particular jar. Okay. So now one thing we we'll concentrate on is what is the name I had given for my jar? Uh, in fact, the class name. Uh, do we need to copy jar files to the cluster before? No. No, no, very good question, Max. Yeah, no, basically, I can have my jar sitting inside my uh, Unix environment. Hope everyone got what exactly Max question is. Do I need to put it in the HDFS environment or can it be sitting near standalone machine? It can be in your standalone machine. Okay. I mean, it, right now in your standalone machine. So I'm going to 
do the jar file i mean added the jar file so now let's let's see the program once again okay and let's see what exactly is the class name i have given so see the it's it's two uh, right and i have package created on org dot acadgil dot hive so let me copy this guy now okay i'm i'm just going to line by line what is being written in the inside the do document so that you guys all do the same thing okay so i'm just copying this package then i understand this is the collection that the udf is two upper right i extended two upper extends udf right so two upper is what i do is me correct so now what i'm going to do is uh next let's see what exactly i need to do once i done with the jar i am going to create a temporary function right to us fine so now so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a create temporary function i'm just going to name it as uh, upper okay uppr okay uh, is there an as i mean is this, okay temporary as as uh, control v the package name dot to upper this was my class name correct i am within codes create temporary function upper so a temporary function as as this exact class name i am giving right because how exactly it comes over here because i am already registered my udf dot jar inside this udf dot udf dot jar i do have my two upper class and right now what i do is i'm i'm creating a temporary function upper using that particular class hope this is clear for everyone okay i just done fine now once i am done with that now what i'm going to do is uh let's do a select select name right select name from employee employee right now let's do a select hope everyone of you got so the result so now upper because this is my temporary function which i created right upper of i'm not sure whether i need to do anything more i'm assuming no from employee let's see that's exactly what so your upper function has worked right so now you can see this was all in a camel case but this is all in upper case so so what i would recommend you guys is try to play around with it you can you can put function to it copy paste see if it's working for you then try to make it lower case change some some very minor function that you know just play around with it and you can start create udf and then keep plugging in and play play around with it so sir, i am as you said sir, repeat what you said actually everything is blurred all right all right okay so so not sure where till where you guys got it okay so till udf creation is fine and means last few seconds all right got got it thanks thanks you for letting me know that okay let's let's do that last guy again what is it okay so now once we have registered it i am assuming everyone got till the registration right we have registered the jar we right we have added the jar in the upper case that is all fine sir how it oh, okay till upper case is fine great okay back with the employee so what i what i want you guys to do is right now what we have we have this jar which is there documented in the document which which you can pick it up from the uh, dashboard okay play around with it just change it to i mean to strings you change it to maybe lower case first okay from this to upper case oh man what is doing okay this to upper case first very the most simplest thing to do is change it to lower case right and then you can change you can see do the register so once you make any changes what you need to do 
you need to do exactly that process, right? You're going to export, create a jar file, then add jar file, add it inside the hive environment. Then what you're going to do, create a temporary function. So repeat all those process and you can create your own UDF functions. Okay, I mean, that, that's exactly what work I want you guys to do. So that's, that's it. Okay, is hope that's fine with you guys. What needs to be done, right? Okay, if any 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 questions around it, so is this clear or any any place that you think you're not comfortable with this creating a UDF? This this might be a pretty uh, for in terms of an interview is concerned and all those things where exactly you have, you have used a. Um, some functions you may have to find out where exactly you have created a function. So make sure you are actually creating some UDF and then try to play around with it so that you understand what in the real time environment, when you create it, what you, you have you face. Okay. So when you normally go for it, you don't have that. Yes, so the moment I, ex I mean, I, I, what even trying to find that from my question, but so even if every, I'm pretty sure there is one place you can register it where it will be permanent sitting. This three functions, every time once you come, come out of the session, it, it's going to go away from here. Yeah, the, there, is, there is some place which may, I can see Rickel raise hand. Yeah. Uh, because I have, I myself have not used this permanent. So I was trying to pull and figure out somewhere. I mean, my first section, which I really was not able to do it. But yeah, I think I should have done some background work on it. Uh, one is generic from the next one. What is that? Uh, permanent function. Uh, next one. Let me just try to find out and get you on that. Maybe in the next session or something, we'll, we'll initial five five minutes or something, we'll spend on it. People may say it, but initial sessions, I mean, when I was doing, not able to figure out using the, because this is the only the way. But if I really wanted what I really believe is where Hive has stored on the lib, lib library. So I, I guess you may, we, may, we may have to end up, create a jar file and place it over there. I mean, that's that's a kind of, reading but that looks like a little tedious so i'm not sure whether with the latest development of hive they have made simplified process during that pro during that time the recommended way of doing it is wherever you you see that basically inside a hive if you go a hive directory inside a hive directory if you go a number of files that's been created so you can create your and then place it over there so that can be a permanent function but i i really think because some of the blogs i will bring after that, so they mentioned they have simplified the process of making the permanent. Which I just because during my now played around with creating a permanent function. So I'll I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Okay, but but for this function, uh, uh, what if we um, that's not that's not going to work. No, but what I would recommend in, in case it's so in the high folder when you create, so if you, if it's going to be in user shared Hadoop, there is a high folder. So inside that high, you multiple that you tell the jar file which you create, it's going to work for you because that's exactly the location from which it picks up those jar file. So that, that should work. But I'm, I'm just going to out and uh, is that a simplified uh, that, that, that's something which I'm interested in buying. Okay, so in case if you don't have to, we have to move on to something completely uh, a big ocean over here now. So are we all set? Uh, any question? Or shall we move? Okay. So, 
Uh, I don't think uh, with help. I mean, can can someone respond? So everyone, I am assuming everyone should be facing because even uh, okay, voice is breaking now. That's not so cool. Okay, let 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 me see. In case if uh, try recording, in case if it's really bad, uh, and figure out. So I what I the the key point which is really required. Uh, okay, so in case if there is those key points, we'll uh, yeah. I have just updated to a is uh, uh, action. So so I think I think there. Will, was some issue from I'm not sure maybe that could be uh, one reason so it was not happening all this while but today is what I found it so maybe I'm not sure if there is really a problem or I mean, because I mean it and before so yeah I think one lens learned is let me before coming up for the sessions I make sure I switch off the session I mean the so see restart the machine for or the net or maybe then entering that should be problems. I apologize for for this. This is so what I Adam, what I'm trying to do is the next session which is which is really key. Some of these concepts are very key. So any of those, uh, something which which is the key stuff, pick it up um, and then use for the next um, next session. So so all those key concepts. We'll again repeat it. So, so this can be P kind of a stuff. But all right, I'll be I'll be slow as much possible. That's the session. Okay, let's close this document. So, so one thing which I want you to do is this document, which you have to replicate and then. Find out how, what things you're finding, what are you finding from that. So let's move on from here to today's. Oh man, those bottles. Let me pick it up. Uh, session number seventeen. So, so please. Might be the one of the real. Is there anyone over here who has done a no sequence as worked or any exposure to maybe anything of that sort? Any 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 knowledge on it? No SQL environment. Anyone has worked on no SQL? Uh, all right. Um, so um, no, I, I was just looking for the response. You guys are able to understand the question also. All right. So basically, that's one slightly difficult area. So okay. So what we may have to definitely do is I may have to repeat all most of these sessions for the for the even the next time. All right. So try to, try to get get into it and try to understand what exactly is it. So. No SQL is really means not only SQL. So let's actually take slide. Okay. So what exactly are we going to see? No SQL database, introduction, cap theorem, A to H base, RDBMS, data model. All right? No SQL database. It's all so and fundas encompasses wide range of technologies and architecture seeks to solve scalability big data uh, performance issue with the relational database okay. so what exactly is the performance issue uh, let me just try to put in uh, i'll open a new File. Why is it not getting opened? See here is it? Uh, okay, let's open it. 
Okay. So basically now what I'm trying to do is, well, what, what happened? Employee ID, right? EMP name, any 100, Sam, and salary in 1000, 200, Peter, and salary may be 200. Okay, so this is something which we are all familiar with, correct? Rows, we have been dealing with such kind of row and column structure of database, is that correct? When you say about MySQL, when I say about uh, Oracle, DB2, any, any, any sort of database, we have all been dealing with rows and columns, which we can figure out, visualize pretty clear. Now, when I say no SQL data, data, it's a columnar database. Okay. It's columnar database. Uh, for the, just make sure you are making me repeat in case we are not able to understand properly. Okay. I am assuming you are able to hear the concept or the word columnar. Okay. So, okay, great. And thanks for the confirmation we kept. Yeah, it, it really helps when you give those confirmation. Okay, so basically now, now one question to you guys. Yes, how exactly is my data? So in case if I'm going to show this, okay, uh, Sita, and let, let's give Sita, since it's a woman's day, right? So let's let's give her more salary. All right. Oh, by the way, no one is there for wishing women's day, correct? Right. Um, so let's, uh, so just one question. How exactly a data is getting stored? In what sequence is the data getting stored? Take, take from cell by cell, okay? This is exactly, I mean, how do I color it now? Uh, data, I think, I think insert is it. Oh man, this new, um, pretty much okay. There you go. Yeah. So let let's do this and and take a border, all border, all right. So this guys, how exactly if I'm going to store this particular data? Anyone know how exactly column nice? Can, can you guys tell me what column gets stored, which cell gets stored first, and which cell gets stored next, and all those things? So our data is starting from here to here. So in case we have, uh, let me just delete. I'm talking about the Oracle database or your DB2 database, which you're dealing with. Okay. So now it's become easy, right? Cell wise, you know, you understand what exactly the cell it's a two, uh, B2 and all those things. Yeah. So how exactly a data is getting stored? Can you, can anyone help me out figuring out this, this concept? I mean, even though you say, okay, what kind of a stupid question has been asked Keep important questions for you to understand the, or appreciate the columnar database concept. So can you tell me how exactly, in case if I'm going to store this data, my data, let me uncolor this one or un, whatever you call it. Let me un, oh, what happened? Automatic, no fill, no fill, right? So the, the yellow highlighted is the only data. So in case if it's go and sit in your Oracle database, how exactly the data will be sitting? How exactly the data? I mean, cell wise. So I have A2. So you can see cell over here. A2, B2, C2, right? A3, B3, C3. You can see exactly how exactly cell by cell data is sitting. So my question is, cell wise, how exactly data is being stored in Oracle database? So what you need to understand is it's going to be A2, right? A2 will be stored as, what will be the next data? In, in, in what in what what chain the data will be stored would be which is this one b2 right b2 is stored after that after that c2 will be stored correct next the next chain of stuff would be a3 a3 b3 and c3 just goes on. VC3, 
hold that up. Okay, so so this is exactly how it's how it's going to go. Correct. So I'm going to introduce a new complete stuff over here. Okay, which is going to be a column not database. Okay, and storing of data is completely a column based. So how exactly the data is going to get stored is what you're going to see over here. In edge space, we are going to cover the edge space database. Okay, so how exactly data is going to store is A3, sorry, it's start two, right? Then it comes A3, then it comes A4. Now, B3, sorry, B2, B3, and B4, and, and it gets repeated, C2, C3, and C4. Hope you guys are able to know what exactly is happening. So in the Oracle database, in the traditional mechanism, in the traditional way, the row and column storage, uh, come on, the row and column storage, this is how, let's delete, yeah, delete. This is how the data was getting stored, okay? But now what is happening? Employee, this data, this, this data, right? A2, A3, A4. So A2, A3, A4, you can see over here. This is how the data is getting stored in the columnar database. Can anyone figure out would be one key benefit out of storing data in such sequence? based on your intuition, based on your sitting at dark as Max says, or, or anyone can figure out what, what, what is the key benefits? See, one of the key benefits, what we see over here is what you need to think in what perspective is, right? Because why we have been forced to come for the non-traditional row table format, we have to go for sequential data will be plus one. Uh, Right, so but but what, what exactly is the benefit out of it? What is the where, where do you see similar data can be extracted? So that's one key stuff behind it. Similar data can be extracted. Great, Pritham. So that's that's one key stuff. And where exactly you can see? So normally when you when you have a database, right? What exactly? Anytime you have such kind of a data, what do you normally do? You may have to either find based on department. You may find out salary of the department, uh, employee similarity of the store. You may find out um, how much is his earnings, what is his level, some sort of a grouping, correct? So that's where a key advantage comes in, right? So what's going to happen? In case it's stored in this fashion, right? In case the data is stored in this fashion, what's going to happen? My area of interest is this guy, right? C2. Next, I need to go for C3. Next, I need to go for C4, right? So C2, I'll go in a row, pick up this C2 guy. Next, I'll again go in a row, pick up this C3 guy. Next, again go in a row, pick up the next guy. So that's exactly the sequence which is. And think of, you're going to talk about data, which is maybe 1 billion, 5 billion. So think of example, the entire world population, I'm going to take a salary or maybe age or something like that. So 7 billion, right? So close to 7 billion is our entire population. So I'm going to traverse through 7 billion records and then do this stuff. It may take me four or five days to entire get those data information if I do a group by with the country code, with the state code or anything of that. So right? I, the, the normally it's not the population data. So one, some data set which I have dealt myself is uh, Syria data. I, I'm more a telecom guy. so. CDR is nothing but any time you want. Okay, so each call that you make is one single row. So there are a days which stores of each and every of your call being stored. So that will be a humongous amount of data sitting in that particular history database. So from there, if I want to go and fetch one single row, it's it's going to take, and if I, if I do a group by or some condition to it, that's it. It's going to run for days before it comes back with the result. Okay, so that's, in that kind of scenario, if I have completely in a continuous format, okay, so what you can see over here is 
you can see the C2, C3, C4, right? Everything is done. So if I want to do a sum of it, it'll just in a fraction of a second, it'll, it'll give you the sum of the entire, maybe thousands or two thousands data, and it's going to give you the result back. That's, that's exactly one of the key advantage of, of columnar database. Uh, already column oriented data with uh, object editing is dig, dig, similar. Maybe we can have document oriented. Yeah, so basically, the, this is all column oriented database. So doc, document oriented is, I think, MongoDB is what you're talking about, right? I'm not sure whether is there any other dot database other than, I mean, the, the, for sure there is there, it is there, but I'm not aware of anything other than, than MongoDB, which is a document database. Okay, that, I mean, if you have, you can, you can throw some light to it. Yeah. That's exactly how it is. That, that's exactly the kind of data load. So this, this is how you're going to see even how the edge space is going to stay. So maybe the next session of ours is going to be practicals where you're going to see some sort of data, how, how you're going to stuff like that. Great, but that's good that you bring in some of your experience or, or some sort of your knowledge so that everyone is, else is benefited. Great, great. That's, that's kind of expectation. So now, what really happened? Okay. So now, let's move on after understanding. So these are all virtual servers, type of NoSQL. So this, basically, this is the one. So type of NoSQL, dot graph, key value store, white column store. So this is exactly where we're going to cover edge space. And one other thing that is very much getting is Cassandra. Okay, that's Cassandra believes in itself that they replace the uh, Oracle database from from where it is. Not sure whether that's an over optimistic view or point or whatever, but that's that's a kind of uh, insight they have. In, okay, edge space is something which has been used in the initial stage, and the Hadoop was been introduced. That's exactly, and this concept edge space is being replicated. The I think uh, Google file, I believe. I mean Google. Google something of that sort. And that's the replica of how exactly edge space is being made. Okay. So document database, which we explained right, right now. So another one is graph store. Graph store where I heard, here is when, when the linking in your, in your social networking, that's, that's exactly done through the graph store. There are hierarchical database where link, linked or, or basically your hierarchical structure is being formed. So in case of an organization chart, I can have a hierarchical database. I do not have any exposure to any, any of this thing other than edge space, edge space stuff. Okay, to a little extent, Cassandra. Use Neo4j is one, one thing that has been greatly used. It's exactly the similar kind of graphical. So in case if I have LinkedIn profile, up and down, both networking is possible. So that, that kind of a networking has been accomplished using a Neo4j. Okay, now cap theorem. How many about cap theorem? Okay, let's quickly go through it. Consistency, availability, and partition. So, what exactly the state says? It's it's impossible to get perfection in all these three area. So, whenever a database has been designed, whenever a database, you need to choose only two can be accomplished in a database in in its full fledged form. Okay, so either you may have to compromise on partition tolerance or you may have to com compromise on consistency, or you may have to compromise on availability. So only this, this, or this can be attained. Okay, so everyone understand consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, right? So th there's some sort, sort of a database which, so AP means availability and partition, that is CouchDB, Cassandra, Dyna, DynamoDB, and all those things. So consistency and partition, these are the guys, and consistency and availability, this is RDBMS. So this is our traditional environment, right? So think of a credit card transaction. I need to have a consistency. I need to have an availability, but that doesn't give me a guarantee of partition tolerance. Correct. Okay, right? So that's how exactly. So, so in case if it's able to accomplish this partition tolerance, what's going to happen? It can even have the complete performance plus consistency and availability, but which, which says, which by, by rule, it's not, it's impossible to attain these three. But we can come close to this one, but but not 100% on, on all these things. So when I say availability, 
what exactly availability? There is a 9-6 rule. So hope everyone knows that. 99.9999 of its availability is a key stuff. So you can't think of uh, an IRCTC site, whatever site, so, so the credit card site, or maybe maybe the typical example can be a share market, right? You cannot afford a share market site to go even a fraction of seconds, right? So you know how much is the financial impact that's going to cause. A huge penalty needs to be attained who exactly is maintaining a particular server and stuff like that. So that's where exactly availability of 99.9999 is being secured. Some of you guys working in the financial market might be knowing uh, this, this part of it. Consistency, how exactly? So in case if a, uh, a transaction has been initiated, I, I just need to make sure in case of any failure or something, it need to roll back, go and roll back to the exact same state. So no data is found. So in case if I start with a web page, uh, for example, you can see the book my show stuff. So in case if I sh so sh show that particular seats being reserved at the first page, I just need to make sure till the booking time it's been blocked for me. If I, if I cancel the transaction, yeah, it's been open for the next public. But in case if I don't do that, within that within a stipulated time period, so maybe they may be giving you for 60 seconds booking or 20 seconds booking. So that entire 20 seconds, the data has been consistent. So in case if any failure, it needs to roll back. Every database should be in sync and going back to the same state. And partition, hope everyone knows what exactly is that. So I have, I have four or five nodes be maintained. I need to I need to be able to get my data into the distributed mode so that in parallel I can do processing and that'll give me a much better performance, right? So that's exactly the three three part, the cap theorem. This, this is important, okay, the cap theorem, at least, I mean, you just need to know what exactly is this in that, in that so that when someone comes for you, you just need to make sure you 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 get a glimpse of what exactly is that and you understand what exactly is that. So consistency, availability, partition tolerance, you can read through this stuff if you already did. This is the same stuff, CA, AP, CA, CP, AP, okay? Now introduction to edge page. Yeah, it's okay. So Google's big table. So this has been replicated with the Google's big table. So this is the concept which we spoke about using those columnar database, right? So we have already used it. So we're going to see a high level architecture, how exactly it's been made. So uh, since we are all from this relational column table from environment, you may find it a little bit in the very initial stage, but it's pretty, pretty simple. Okay. So let's, let's uh, then coming in this fashion. Uh, I just want to make it, make it little, it's, it's one of the, one of the very, very simple diagram to digest. Okay. Let's, uh, how do you do? Let me open my good old friend. PowerPoint. Okay, and just remove this guy. Remove this guy too. Okay, so now what scenario what we're going to see is how oh, exactly I'm going to write data into my uh, edge database. Okay. So I have exactly the same master, slave, and all those concepts even sitting in the edge space. Uh, edge space and you need to understand that when I say edge space that really sits on top of the HDFS environment. Okay. But what do you, what do I, what do I mean by that? So underlying storage, whatever you see is nothing but an HDFS storage. So how do distributed file system is the under underlying storage. Okay. On top of it, I do have an edge space layer. So it's a virtually, uh, a virtual concept being maintained on top of it, which, which makes the system to behave like, there is a columnar database being maintained and that's how it's, it's actually maintaining a fast processing. Okay. Let's typically see with an example, how see is my voice really dis I mean, it's, it's breaking right now or distorting. I just want to reduce or increase my pace of, I'm, I'm kind of a person who a little, little fast, maybe because of my, the, the place I'm coming from. No, no, it's fine. Now. Okay, great. So in case if you guys want me to slow down, so make sure you are 
Okay, heads up. My issues right here, maybe not mine or some other people. Uh, I find it a little bit, little too boring when it, the conversation is too slow. I, I go to sleep myself, so I, it might be really bad for my part if I do exactly repeat the same mistake. So, in case it's one of just please make sure you're telling to slow down so that it's much easy for all of us to understand. On to increase the pace, that also I'm more than happy to do. All right, what exactly is happening now? Okay, so one key concept, what we're trying to understand over here is how exactly I'm going to write data into my edge space, okay? So there are key, some of the stuff which we need to understand. Where do I get my text? This is the text, no? Oh, come on. Uh, where do I see my editing shape? Okay, I think this is text. Yeah, so one thing which I need to know, first guy for us is work ahead log, W-A-L, okay? I have something known as work ahead log. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to write some data into the edge space database. That's my intention. How, how I do it and all those things, we're gonna see through practicals in the next session. But here, I have some data sitting in my uh, Unix environment. From that Unix environment, I'm just gonna push it into edge, edge space database, okay? How exactly edge space database? Take it in an architectural point of view is what you're gonna see. First and foremost, WAL, which is work ahead log, okay? Any data that needs to be written in H, H, into edge base will be first stored in WAL work ahead log, which is actually a persistent storage or a permanent storage inside a node. Let's consider this as a node. I'm, I'm actually not following the conventional way of teaching over here, okay? Um, it was supposed to be more, if, but I believe, that's a little tough to digest because I have also gone through exactly the similar kind of stuff. Uh, I just want to use my experience of how I learned it to share it with you guys. Okay, so first and foremost, work ahead log, which is a persistent memory. Let's let's pick up a bigger block now, uh, rectangle. And if I do this, what's gonna happen? I'll come over here. Can I make it transparent or something? Uh, bring center back, center back. Okay, the so WL guy is there over here. Let's change its color. So first and foremost, WL, okay, which is sitting inside that. And here we do have a client. Don't want to waste time in try drawing these diagrams. Okay, uh, let's do and make it make it some green color or something. Okay, so this is my client. From client, I'm going to get some data. This this guy is going to get some data in. Okay, and for most what we said, it's going to go and sit inside WAL. Uh, let's make him move and come. Yeah, and this is nothing but permanent data database. So. Let me change that color to some trend. WA, let, let's this WL be yellow. Because in, in most of the test book and all those things, what you can see is we have even introducing some guy known as mem store. Okay, let's make it as a different shape also so that it's easy for you guys to, let's bring this guy as mem store. Okay, the color given for mem store, mem store is nothing but just a memory. Let's let's give this color to this guy. Okay. Uh, let me write write this. Okay, I think this is this is him, right? No. Mem store. Mem store. Really, this is nothing but memory. So what? When a client writes any data to it, how much time we have? Okay, it's 10, 10. Any, any data that has been written by the client, it'll be first written to work ahead log, okay? Once it's been completed, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this and put it in the memory, which is nothing but a mem store, okay? Is that is that pretty clear? And one more thing I'm just gonna introduce, once this memory is get filled, 
Okay. Once a memory is get filled, it's going to come down to someone known as uh, where is the guy now? What color can we use? Green. Green. Okay. Let's make it as light green. Okay. So the moment it's been completed or filled, I'm going to use some other guy known as H file. Okay. So what do you need to understand is the moment this guy get filled up, I'm going to write this guy into H file, H file. Not sure if this is better to write in, uh, yeah, standard color, right? Okay, then. No, not done. Green, sorry. Okay, so this, this files are known as H file. So the moment it gets filled, it's going to just push or flush this data into H file. So this is hard disk. This also hard disk, but this is memory. That's all you know. That's the prime factor. Why exactly this has been written in the hard disk? So in case node failure, in case of the node gets failed, okay? This, since it's been stored in into the WAL work ahead log, which is a persistent memory, when it comes back, it will be still retained over there. So that's the reason it's been first directly written into, into the persistent memory. And from there, it's getting stored into the uh, memory store. Mem store, nothing but a RAM. Hope this is fine. So once it gets filled, it gets written to the side. Okay, so this has one GB of data available. Okay, what's going to happen? That exact one GB will be pushed into this H file. Okay, again, WL is, will write data into it and keep storing into it. Again, a new H file will be getting created. So hope, hope you guys got that concept. So the moment it gets filled, it gets pushed into H file and that's how exactly the data is being stored. Okay. And when I speak about this H file, now we need to recollect back, go back, I mean, flashback, the movie style. You need to understand all our name node, data node concept and all. So this data is nothing but data node. This guy is nothing but our data node guy which is shown over here, right? This is H file, H file data, which is virtually shown how exactly it's been stored. And this is because underlying storage of any of this H space things, what about underlying storage is complete on the HDFS environment and H space makes it a virtual environment, bring those data from the Adobe environment and, and then just show it in the outside world. Okay, so that's that's how it's it works. How exactly a data is written? Is this fair enough for you guys, or is there is there a, is there a question? How exactly a data is written into that? Just just try to. I mean, what I'm trying to do is to use some portion of your brain. So very small concept is what we introduce. Slowly, one by one, we are going to get uh get one by one data into it. I mean, just key low. I mean, what, what we call for it slow poisoning, right? Just like the frog is being heated up and it, it doesn't understand. So basically, you guys will not even know when you actually get an Hadoop H base expert, right? Uh, too much of it. Okay, so next question H file. Mm, what exactly is that? So that might be stored. Okay, once complete data is being stored, I'm just going to push it. And that push data, which was sitting in said mem, mem store, is being stored in H file. So H file is also a hard disk. I mean, a, a, a file storage inside the persistent memory, which is nothing but my hard disk. This is my main memory, RAM. Okay. Hope, hope that's, that's clear. So just, so what we are trying to do is just trying to, a client is trying to just write data into this particular code. So that's, that's all the very, very simple work ahead log, mem store, H5, simple stuff. Okay. Let's slowly make it complicated, but not. I don't want to wave with. Okay. So is there anything more? It's region. We'll do the store file. H file. H file. We got mem store. We made uh, work ahead log. DFS client. Okay, now let's 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 introduce to it slowly. And hope everyone is aware of who's the master, who is a slave in terms of data node, name node, and all those things, right? We know that 
coordinator helping us to do stuff and all those things, right? So here, exact same master is nothing but H master. And what exactly was the role? What exactly was the kind of role that has been played by name node in our very initial session? What what are the kind of what are the kind of things that has been done by name node? One is uh, giving touch to data node. Um, not really. Giving task to the data node, no. That should be actually job task and task tracker. So it, it doesn't give a task, the data comes in. Uh, yes, application uh, also partially. I, I will not be completely, completely agree to those commands. Yeah, so basically, Heartbeat signature check and all those things are the key, key facts which is being done by name node, right? So that should be the first answer because most of the comments that you guys have made over there is actually a resource management job, a resource manager job. So in the in the Hadoop one da, one option, yeah, block report, monitoring, all those things can be. But but when an interviewer is asking this question, and if your answer is that first, I may not be impressed. <laughs> okay, yeah, but. But this space at this current stuff, it's fine. But what I'm trying to understand, the key differentiate, different differentiator between a name node responsibilities and what is the corresponding name node? Name node is a master, right? What is the corresponding master? It's a resource manager for Hadoop two 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 versions. Job task, job tracker for Hadoop one dot star version, right? So many, some of the those have given is job tracker tasks. So monitoring what exactly is the task, execution, and all those things, job tracker. But but I understand, I'm I'm pretty much sure you guys got the concept because the way you guys responded, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Yeah, at this point of time, that's that's good enough of information that you guys have collected. Good. But yeah, I'm just trying to trying to narrow down and and bringing bringing you guys to that expertise level. That's all I was trying to not trying to be a critical here. Pretty much happy with you guys learning curve. Okay, so a similar kind of a heartbeat signal monitoring and all done by this guy, Zookeeper. He is responsible for, when Zookeeper comes, when there are multiple components or multiple nodes, give everyone together. He's basically a peacemaker. So everyone group together and then pass on information. Okay, his information to other guy, other than this guy. A coordinator is exactly the kind of responsibility done by Zookeeper. HMaster does exactly the name node kind of a job where where exactly the data is being placed and how exactly the data needs to be picked up. Every of those information is being sitting inside HMaster. So when, when we speak about HMaster, name node should come in your mind. So it's, it's, it's just similar kind of a responsibility of a name node. Okay. Uh, I expect you guys to get exact the visualization stuff. Slowly we are going to going to reset, so don't worry. Now we are going to introduce a little bit more concepts. So what I'm planning to do is just a region server and region. That's all which uh, I'm trying to trying to put an end over here so that, yeah, that's all we have at a high level, scalable deployment management node. Hadoop versus the thing, no SQL database, great. So that's all. So that's a good, Good progress, yeah. So now another concept that we need to understand is what exactly is the region server now? Okay. So, so the entire one single node, okay? Let's, let's try to, let's try to move these guys together. Oh man. Come on. Okay, so if I do a move, will it move? Yes, it all moved. Right. So now let's. Oh, someone, someone is missing. No, everyone is fine. And work ahead log. Let's put it inside this. This is our work ahead log. 
So now what we are going to introduce is another, sorry guys, I don't have any other shapes which I can, I know it's boring to have rectangle and square, right. So this is my region server now. One single node of mine is my region. What exactly is the entire node server, inside which I can have, have region now. Let's bring in something inside this. And let's change the color. Let's change the color to purple. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, C control V control V control V control V. Inside the region, so this is nothing but, and these are my re regions. Okay. Uh, let's let's do a slowly move and try to get this concept clear. So these are my regions and this is my region server. Now, how do I name it? Uh, somewhere over there you saw, right? Okay, this is the guy. This is the guy and I'm gonna name him as region. Okay, let's name it as RS, region server. Okay, and this is nothing but region, region, okay, these are all regions. So a region server can have maximum thousand regions, okay? Now what are all those things? So we were been discussing about this guys, right? Data, how exactly data is being stored, columnar, other things, and suddenly where come this region, region, or what is the relation now? So now what we are going to see over here is a little bit more, a little bit more, Concept, okay, aside this concept of region server and region now, I just suddenly I didn't, I didn't get you guys to column family and the column. So this everyone is, I'm assuming everyone is fine with this. How exactly? Now we're going to introduce a new concept known as a column family and a column. Okay. So what exactly is a column family is what you're going to see over here now. So So let's let's do this. Uh, how do I insert? This is one guy. Let's color it with ah too much of colors. More colors. Let's make it really light. Blue color, okay. All right. And then one more guy. Let's let's put another color to it. At home. Let's put a color to it. Let's let it be green. And then add. Now, this is my data, which is personal data. How do I merge the cell? Which is a merge? Yes. So this is my personal data. And exactly the same thing is what I'm going to do is you guys might have guessed it right. This is my professional data. Okay, so some concept are gonna come closer. So this entire guys, I can't, I can't. What I'll do is I can just border across to it, right? Thick border. This entire guys is nothing but it's a table for me now. Okay. In civil, I have personal column family. Understand the key difference, okay? Column family. So this is one column family. This, this is two column family. Okay. So basically in HP have, there's a limitation. I think it's 250. 200 column family. Okay. So, so it's a little bit more to it, how exactly column family, columns are being given and all those things, which we're going to see in the next session. But right now, try to understand, there is a concept or a term known as a column family getting introduced over here, okay? Inside a column family, personal, when I say personal, it's going to be uh, maybe our other number, okay? So that, that's my unique identification number. 
and my name and my address. AD address. Okay. Now, when it's professional, exactly the same guy. What exactly is this professional data? He's going to have. Uh, he's going to have what? Mm, maybe, maybe the organization where he works, uh, which department, which level? Basically, is a senior manager, is a manager, is a TL, is an SSC. What exactly is he? So this constitutes my entire table, and I'm going to call this table as EMP table. Okay. Employee table is this personal. What exactly is this? What is this? This guy called together. I'm just trying to make sure you guys have not slept. Still need for the session for at least five more minutes. So what exactly is this guy called? Column family, great, right? Yeah, that the block of personal is column family, right? And this is column family for me, and this is another column family for me. And inside this, even though it's 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 a smaller stuff, it's a very very key stuff that you need to understand. And and what does this guys? What are these guys called? Hey, so this is known as column. The column I have, I am. I think I'm not take it for a pinch of salt. Maybe 99 percentage. So there is no limit for a column to be inside a column, but there is a limit for how many number of family I can have. And I'm assuming I'll just very a number of column family. So I'm assuming I can have 255. Verify that. 255 column family for a uh, for a table, whereas there is no limit inside a column family. You can have n number of columns, so it's just a grouping of a column, and that we call it as column family. Okay, I guess we have four more minutes, and I don't think I wanted to introduce a region concept. So, so one more thing, what you want to understand is whatever we spoke about is region, mem storage file, and all those things. This entire guy, how do I make it? Okay, let me let me uh, 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 die over here. So, so like, come on, guy. So, let go inside this. Does it have an arrow? I can't even see an arrow for this. I'm, I'm just wasting my time. That's it. <laughs> right, this guy, it needs to go inside this. This is just like that in, in the cartoon you might have seen, right? A binocular view of it. So this entire stuff is going to go and sit inside this region. Is what I'm trying to say. So this should actually go send to friend, right? Right, bring to friend. Yeah, and I need to actually control V. Will it increase the format? No. Uh, color being changed to black or something can make it much more different. Yes. So control C and control B. Let's bring in this guy over here so that it. Yeah, I can bring it like this. So what I'm trying to say is the diagram which which has been projected out and shown is been uh, is been so all this guy is going to come and sit inside this region. So basically, a region will contain this memory, mem store. This WH, WAL work ahead log and H file and all those things. I'm I'm pretty much sure I have I've confused you guys before going to bed. That's okay. So you can start thinking of it and get a nightmare about mem store and H file and not get a proper sleep. So that's where I really want to this session now. And any questions? So just want to make sure you understand this. This guy is going to go and sit region, and we are going to get a lot more covered what exactly a region and what is the relation between whatever we spoke about over here, column family. Actually, these two guys, are, right? So that's that's where we we will we'll break.
a logical break over here and then try in relation between these two architecture in our next session. So before winding up, would you please explain about relation between column family and region? Column family and region. Uh, that's that's not a brief stuff. That's 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 a pretty pretty cool inside the edge space. So I just want to take time uh, time to to really make you understand what, what, how exactly is that. So pretty good, pretty much good. So basically, I can have one single column family inside uh, inside a region. I'll have a region wise split. So which is a little, little heavy stuff. So which I don't want to just rush through. You need to understand it pretty, pretty in detail. So let's, let's look into that. Yeah, kind of, kind of partnering. So, so those, so from a mainframe background, you might, you might have heard of, yeah, you can, you can think of visualizing. So, so I don't know how many of you are from the mainframe. I heard at least some of you guys are from, so you might have heard of CI interval, CA interval in case you had been doing KSDF and, ESDF stuff and all those things. So uh, partition, sorry, what was that? CA interval, CA interval, uh, rows, uh, partition split. Those kind of concepts are being introduced over here. So non mainframe guys, just, just, uh, yeah. Um, not, not really, yeah, that, that's why I said, so I don't want to introduce a lot, lot of stuff at one shot, but till now I'm assuming whatever is being covered, you guys are fine with this concept. So don't, don't think of anything which you're not covered. Let's, let me take up that slowly and, and you guys are getting into it. Those concepts. But yeah, so so next next session will be how exactly this relation is being maintained and stuff like that. that that's that's a plan. Any questions before we wind up? So one minute pass. So let's let's make a couple of more minutes. Sure. So I, I look into in case if there is in, in in this recording, if there is some sort of a glitch or anything if I found. So those those prime concepts I'll be repeating in the next session so that so that you can you're not going to miss anything. Sure. No problem. So so any any questions? Uh, is this concept clear, by the way? I mean, that's that's something. So, so that based on that, I can I can proceed with the next session, right? Is there someone who's finding it, finding it tough to understand this concept? Because there's no harm in making raising your hands, telling notes, it's something pretty much new for me and this thing. But that way, I understand the pulse of it. So, in case if you really guys think, okay, no, there is there is some sort of more focus needs to be there in this area, I'm pretty much okay for doing that. But I do not want to have it a boring session making. Okay, I mean, I pretty much know it because comments from some of my pre from of my previous batch, which has given I, I'm repeating stuff too much, which I really don't want to do because if you, you guys sorry, time is also precious for us, so I just don't want to make it dragging one. So make sure if you don't understand any of those minor concepts, also raise your hands, say that okay, I mean something I don't I don't get concept pretty clear. Let's let's look into a different angle and then try to try to get get this concept cleared. Anyways, if everyone is fine with this, so I'm assuming all of you guys who are sending it, it's okay understanding this concept, right? That, that's my understanding because no one has raised your hands. So so don't worry, you can take your time, take a piece of paper, whatever is being covered in the session, but make sure now you may have to work. So in case if you're going to go, you say okay, I have a huge piled up in my in my organization so i will not be able to I'm, I'm definitely telling you guys you are not going to get benefit of this course in that case so make sure at least 10 15 minutes you utilize it and try it try to work out try to understand this concept listening to this video making a diagram out of it otherwise you you are definitely not going to take advantage of this course i mean let me be very blunt and up for making the statement okay i don't want to hold on any more so you guys have good night and speak to you on Thursday. All right. Thank you guys.